Good day everybody, Timmy here. I recently gave a presentation about building a Cordova application and besides from having not enough time to finish the demos, I guess I didn't sacrifice enough to the demo gods because all my demos went totally wrong. So I decided to just do the demo again and record it this time. So here we go, um, we are inside Visual Studio and I'm going to start by creating a new Cordova application and just call it uh, weather app because we're going to um, make a web service call and show uh, the local weather let's wait a second for Visual Studio to create the project and there we are Visual Studio created the, the project. Uh, the project contains uh, a few uh, interesting things. Uh, a merges folder. Um, everything inside this folder uh, will be uh, copied over to the www folder and uh, overrides uh, anything that is there. So you can uh, create some uh, platform specific code or CSS or whatever you want. Um, so you can place all that in, uh, in the merges folder. Uh, of course there's a folder with resources. Uh, again, platform specific. Uh, if you create an app you want some uh, icons or splash screens for various devices. So you can place them uh, inside the, the resource folder. The www folder contains um, the entire app that is packaged to the store. Everything outside um, the www folder uh, is not included in the package so you can use uh, for example less files um, and you can place them outside www folder and then when the less files are compiled into CSS you can uh, have them copied over to the CSS folder over in the www folder in the root of the project there are a couple files included uh, if you want to light, if you want to use uh, Bower, you can uh, configure it in the, the Bower folder. Uh, the build uh, Taco is the the Microsoft tools for Apache Cordova. Um, right now, it contains I think this, the the version of Cordova that is used. And the package folder, and this is where we are going to start. It likes the uh, the name to be all lowercase. Uh, just to get rid of the squigglies. Um, I'm going to use uh, two uh, dependencies. Uh, so one is for jQuery. Let's use the latest version. And jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile. Mobile, yes. Again, the latest version. And uh, because I don't want to include everything in my www folder, um, I'm going to add some um, dev dependencies. I like to use grunt. So I'm going to include it. And in this case, I only need the grunt contrib copy library. Uh, copy to have grunt copy the files over uh, let's fix this typo there I like to have grunt copy the uh, files over now you might notice dependencies are downloading If you look at the output folder, you can you can see all the dependencies uh, being downloaded. There we are. It didn't take that long. Um, now these uh, files need to be copied over. So I prepared the Grunt file already. So 
just add an existing file. I added the file to my solution, to my project, and we have a look inside. It's just a basic grunt file, uh, which uses the um, grunt contrib copy task and uh, registers it. It's initialized, um, it just copies two, uh, well, sets of files basically. Uh, one from uh, jQuery, uh, it copies it to uh, the, the scripts folder, and it will be placed inside www folder in my scripts folder. The same goes for the jQuery mobile. In this case, I'd like to have the CSS uh, JS files and the images. Uh, the uh, it it just searches through the entire. Uh, hierarchy and copies the PNG files over to the uh, to the lib folder, and from there I can uh, I can use them. Um, I also um, had Visual Studio actually add the uh, before build uh, binding, and this refers to the task runner in Visual Studio. Um, as you can see down here. It already uh, loaded the grunt file and uh, found the the copy function. And because I um, I I had it create the binding, um, it 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 will run uh, before every build. So it's very useful for compiling uh, less files to CSS. I can run it from here too. Just run the task. It copied quite some files to my lib folder, and I got two folders here: one with jQuery and one with jQuery Mobile, including um, a whole lot of uh, icons I might uh, I might want to use. Um, so let's see what it uh, what it does. Just hit run. It will start uh, Ripple in the in the Chrome browser by default. Because it's the first time I I built the project, it will um, add the Android platform automatically. To wait for another second to. Have Visual Studio create the Android project. And with a little luck, Chrome will show the Ripple emulator. And we're out of luck. But we can try again and see if it works. Yes, and this is the default application. And this is the Ripple emulator. Uh, it runs inside the browser, and you can have um, you can you, you can poke at the em emulator. You can have uh, like things like geolocation or, or network settings to test uh, how the application would respond without having to deploy it to a device. It works pretty easy. Next, um, let's add a JSON of a JavaScript file with uh, with the Excel app. It's uh, pretty easy. Um, it creates uh, a namespace and adds a weather function, get weather function uh, to the namespace. The weather function will look at the um, the, the Use jQuery to get the the, the city um, element, which uh, I'm going to add uh, in a few seconds. Uh, this will be an input box and re reads the value of that and stores it in city. It makes an API call to the Open Weather Map API and handles the response in case of an uh, error. 
it will uh, log it to the console. The response will show the, the temperature, uh, an image, the description, and uh, make sure it is it is visible. <coughs> Let's change the DUI. I'm not going to need the entire device ready stuff anymore. I'm not going to make a beautiful design app in this, in this demo, but just um, have it uh, getting to work. Inputs with the ID city. I'll have a, a diff with the ID summary. I'm ready to call it yes. And we'll have a temperature, an image, and a description. Diff ID temperature. Uh, well, actually, the, the temperature will be in in uh, Celsius. So let's do it this way. Span ID is temperature. Temperature. I want the degrees, I think it's like deg or something. Yes. So great we have IntelliSense in Visual Studio for things like the the, the um, HTML uh, things. Image ID equals uh, or does it have an ID, just image. Give it an ID weather icon. And I'd like to have another div with an ID equal to what was it? Description. Let's have it describe what weather what the weather is at the moment. And I like to hide this, so just set the style to display none. Um, yes. Now, before we can can run the application, we of course have to include some some scripts. So we need to add the weather. I just just drag it over from the from the the solution explorer to my to my code. And I have to add some files from this one. I'd like to have the jQuery mobile CSS. Let's add it right over there. Oh. Almost. So, actually, I'd like to have it before my custom CSS so I can change uh, anything. And then the JavaScript. Let's edit below. Don't need a minified version at the moment, and just add jQuery two. So let's see what do we have. Um, right now, to be sure, um, we can make a, 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 a cross-domain call. We're running inside our own little container, and we're going to make a call to the outside world. We need to add the URL we're calling to the uh, content security policy. And I think that's that. Temperatures are... yes! So let's have a look what happens if we run it again. It should be a bit quicker now, yes. Of course, Ripple will will fail me again. Yes, it always does the first time. And here we go. Um, well, we actually need a button here to make the call. So I forgot a few things. Input ID is get weather weather. 
there. Uh, no, it's not an input, it's a button. Button ID get weather. And let's give it to text get weather. There we go. And we have to respond to the button call. So let's go to the index. This file is, is added by default uh, project and it just handles the, 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 the first functions you need to device ready. And then it uh, binds to the uh, pause and resume events. So you can handle these. I don't need these anymore. They were just for showing the first uh, the, the first screen I showed uh, earlier. Now because I uh, that was an ID. Because I added the jQuery mobile library, I can handle the tap event. And we can handle the function and just call, uh, we call it weather app get weather. This will call this function, which will handle the whole thing. So let's try it out again. We got a button, we can enter a city. So let's say we want to have a look at the weather in New York. Just New York, get weather. And we have eight degrees and a few clouds. We're missing the icon. So let's see what's going on. I'm going to hit F12 to bring out the developer tools. And I guess we missed another um, Oh wait, yes, the URL that's used for the images is slightly different from the URL we're calling uh, to get the weather itself. So we have to add this uh, URL too, to the, to the content security policy. Let's go to the, let's copy it and then just paste it in here. So want to do some other things. Uh, let's clear the whole thing. Well, actually, just close it up. So there we go. I hit F5 to refresh the browser. I do not need to to build the app any again, just to debug it. Let's see, New York. Whoa. We already know the weather in New York now, but yes, a few clouds and a nice little icon. Let's see if it's Amsterdam uses. Not a city, it's 11 degrees and a few clouds also. And let's say Tokyo, what's the weather in Tokyo? Broken clouds, and I guess it's night, the icon is dark. So there you go, a simple Cordova application. If you have any questions, uh, just ask them uh, below. If you liked the video, just give it a thumbs up, and if you really do like it, just uh, subscribe to my videos. I thank you for watching.